Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to downgrade macOS Big Sur on your Apple Silicon M1 Mac. Let's say you're having an issue after you update it to the latest version with an application or some other reason where you need to get to the previous operating system version. Well, on M1 it's a little bit different than it was on Intel Macs, and I'm here to guide you through that process. This is going to be the easiest way to do it. So we've got a lot to go over, so let's jump in and get started. Okay, to get started, we've got three different ways to downgrade macOS on Apple Silicon M1 Max. The first way is the, the first video that I did, which was to downgrade from the current version to a previous version using Apple Configurator 2 and a second Mac and an IPSW full installer of Big Sur. And at the time, that was the only way to downgrade. And that was because Apple had a bug in recovery that prevented you from using a USB installer to be able to downgrade. That's fixed. So now there's two additional ways. The second way, the USB installer, you boot to recovery and then you run the previous version of macOS Big Sur and reinstall over the top of your current install and that retains your user data, which is a really nice feature. And the third option is just to do a full erase install. Let's say you have your files backed up on a USB drive and you want to just put them back on there and you just want to do a full erase and wipe and go and that's the third way so that's three different ways to do it and I'm also going to talk about time machine if you did a time machine and you want to be able to revert back to that it's changed in Mac OS Big Sur you can't just boot to recovery click on your time machine and have it reinstall Mac OS and reinstall your data you have to do that from the migration assistant now and I'll show you that at the end of the video and let's figure out how we can create a USB installer put Big Sur into your boot to recovery and get started. So the first thing we need to do is go to my Big Sur full installer database here. And I keep all of the current versions of Mac OS Big Sur in an install assistant package. And that's actually a redesigned piece of software that Apple uses in Big Sur and above to be able to get the Mac OS Big Sur app to your applications folder. So if I click on, and I wanna get, let's say I wanna get any of these previous versions, I click on this it'll download to my downloads folder and here it is and all we need to do is click on this and run the installer and that's going to put the Mac OS Big Sur app right into your applications folder like the Mac App Store and that's the problem if you go to the Mac App Store now you can't get a previous installer so once we have that package all we're going to do is install it right to our applications folder so hit install type in our admin password here and it's going to install it right to our applications for us. Let's open that up and look, there's our Mac OS Big Sur. Now, how do you know that you you downloaded the right one? And you there's an easy way to figure that out. Just hit Command I while you have it highlighted. You can look at the information and we'll zoom in here. 16408. And as you can see here, I have the app version 16408. So we know we downloaded 1123. Now that we have that, we have to create a USB installer of Big Sur so we can access that in recovery. So now, as you can see, I have our USB installed here and you can use a USB hard drive or a USB A with a dongle or anything that you have at home. It doesn't really matter as long as it has about 16 gigabytes or more to be able to install to. So here's my USB flash drive that I have mounted in the desktop. Let's go into disk utility and we're going to erase it. It cannot be APFS formatted to be able to use the bootable installer. So up here will be our main SSD internal hard drive of our M1 Mac. We're not going to ever touch any of that. We always want to look for external. So you can see here's my USB sand disk and then we want to be able to go down to here and it's going to usually say entitled or something else right from the factory and all we want to do is be able to click erase and again if this is default to APFS make sure you go to Mac OS extended journal and click erase. Okay we're done. So we'll click done here Okay, now we have to create the USB installer. The best way to do it is to open up the terminal app in the utilities folder in applications, and we're going to do all the work in there. The first thing we need to do is write this whole command that'll do the work. But the easiest way to do it is to go back to your applications folder. You'll see that there's the Mac OS Big Sur app in here, and all we need to do is go into the contents of the app. So Hold down control and right click and you can do show package contents or right click if you have that on your mouse and click that and now we're inside the installer. Go into the contents folder, go into the resources folder and there's create install media. That's the binary that we need to do the job. But before we drag this over to the, to the terminal, we need to run this command as an administrator. So type in sudo and then space. Now we can drag 
the create and install media and all that. There's, there's that whole command for you. Now, we, where do we want to create the install media? So we're going to give it the volume. And then we'll do a space and we're going to drag our USB that we have mounted on the desktop over here. And there it is. The entire command is ready to go. So all we need to do is hit enter. Now, before we hit enter, it's going to also ask us after we type in our password, if we want to be able to erase the disk. So we'll hit yes. So we do we want to erase that one and we're sure we'll hit enter. And this is where it's going to start erasing the disk and it is going to then start copying the files. I like to have activity monitor open here with the disk tab selected here. And then I can see the, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit here. You can actually see how fast the installer the create install media is going to write to the USB drive. So right now we're uh, writing about 23 megabytes a second, which is okay. And it's going to start to get a little bit faster as we continue on here through the process here. As you can see, we're almost at 10%. So we'll give it a little bit of time. And again, it all depends on what kind of a device you have. For example, this is a USB 3.1, so it's going to be pretty quick. This is a USB 3.0, USB A, so it's going to be a little bit slower. And of course, if you have a USB spinning hard drive, it's going to be a little bit slower than that, or a USB 2.0 uh, flash stick, for example, like a cheaper one. So it could take anywhere between five and 20 minutes. If it seems to be taking a little bit longer, don't worry about that. It will, it will eventually finish, and we'll be right back after this is finished. Okay, our Mac OS Big Sur USB is finished and we are ready to boot into recovery and downgrade from 11.3 or a future version to whatever version that you want to be able to install. So let's shut down the Mac and I'll show you how to boot into recovery on M1. Shut down. On a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, it's very simple. We let it power down for about five seconds and we're going to hold down the power button until it turns on and we see that what's called is the boot picker. So let's hold down the power button now. You'll see continue holding for startup options. Keep holding it until you see loading startup options Then you can let go and then it's going to load the boot picker. If you just shut it down and you hold down the power button and nothing happens, that means you did it too quick. You got to at least wait anywhere between five and 10 seconds first letting it power down, then hold down the power button so we can get into recovery. Now you'll see you can boot to Macintosh hard drive, install Mac OS Big Sur, or, or the standard internal recovery. Now keep in mind, there's a change on M1 Max where you, you used to be able to click on this and say, oh, I'm booting to the USB. You're actually booting to recovery and running the installer app. That's the change on Apple Silicon. So we'll click on install Mac OS Big Sur and we'll click continue. Now, to get into the boot picker on a Apple Silicon Mac Mini, all we need to do is hold down the power button the same way as we did with the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. And on an iMac, we'll be able to hold the power button in the back of the iMac the same way, and we'll get to the boot picker recovery menu to be able to do that. Now we're in recovery, and we're running the Mac OS Big Sur app from our USB. We're gonna click continue here now, this is where we get into the two different ways where we want to be able to do this now. And what I mean by two different ways is that if you want to be able to just do a fresh install, we need to back out of here, go into the disk utility, and then erase the drive from here. And we'll do a full erase Mac. So you would click on Macintosh hard drive here. You would click erase and then you click erase volume group and then another screen would come up that says you want to erase this Mac and that's going to go through a full erase Mac, erase all your settings, all your NV RAM settings, reboot you, activate Mac, and then you're ready to install Big Sur fresh from the same USB. But we're going to do it the easy way. We're going to reinstall over the top of the current install and retain our data. Before we do the install, I wanted to talk about Time Machine real quick because you might say, well, hey, I have a Time Machine on 11.2.3 and I'll show you what that looks like. If we click on Restore Time Machine here and then click Continue, it'll say Restore from Time Machine. You'll click Continue to see what Time Machine backups you have and it's going to find my two drives on there and I've got two different drives showing Time Machine. So I might be able to click Time Machine 11.2.3 here 
and then there's my time machine and I click next and I, oops, wait a minute, here's an error. It says, you must use Migration Assistant to transfer data to use this backup. Reinstall Mac OS if necessary and then use Migration Assistant to transfer the data from your backup. This is a new Mac OS Big Sur. You, on Catalina and below, you would be able to use this function of Time Machine to be able to reinstall Mac OS and then restore your data and then you're right at the login window. With Big Sur in future, you're unable to do that so you have to reinstall Mac OS first. Then when you get to the Setup Assistant, it says, would you like to restore from a backup? Click yes and then you, you select the one right here. You'll be able to click this and you'll hit continue and you'll be able to get all your data back after we reinstall Mac OS Big Sur. So let's get out of Time Machine and then we'll click in, install Mac OS Big Sur, click continue, and continue. Agree, agree, and then click our internal hard drive and click continue. It's gonna ask us for our administrator password, and then continue, and there we go. So there it goes, it's getting started, and it's gonna reinstall over the top of 11.3, 11.2.3, 11 and then once we get to the login window, we'll be downgraded in all of our data. And this is the easiest way to downgrade Mac OS Big Sur with just one Mac. And I say one Mac because if you got two Macs, really the easiest way is to use D, uh, DFU mode, and in eight minutes, you're back on the previous version. But this is great because it retains all your data. You literally will boot back into the operating system and we'll show you after this is all done and you'll have all your data back and you'll be ready to go. Okay, we're back. Let's log in. And we will not enable Surrey. And we're back at the desktop. Let's do a SW underscore version. And hit enter. And there we are, 11.2.3. We made it back and all of our data is still on the desktop, just as it was when we were 11.3. We, we reinstalled Mac OS Big Sur 11.2.3 right over the top of 11.3 and we're back at a previous version. One thing I wanted to mention was your security stance when you downgrade. And what I mean by that is that when you have the latest version out, it has all the latest security fixes for malware or any kind of problems that Apple has found out there or any security researchers have reported. So just keep in mind that when you downgrade, you just have to be safe when you're surfing on the internet because again, you're not fully protected as you would be if you're on the latest and greatest version. So again, just something to keep in mind when you do downgrade, but that's it. We downgraded our Mac OS Big Sur, Apple Silicon M1 Mac from one version to a previous version the easiest way possible while we retained all of our data. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, you know I truly appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.